ways to start your leak check process, and I highly recommend this, is to start the PGM beforehand, let it warm up, and get it ready before you walk into the building. processes for leak checking would be checking the open front cases. And the best way I've found to do that is what I call the drop and scroll method. And uh, here's an example of the open front cases. What I'll do is, is I'll stick the probe down inside the case and it takes about five seconds for the uh, information to get to the leak detector. I'll walk down a couple of feet and probe again. If it would go off here, I would go back to where I was five seconds ago and start checking in earnest. So basically, it's a very quick process. Don't stick it all the way to the bottom in case there's water or debris in there. But you move about four or five feet at a time, probing into the case to see if you have any gas. If you encounter any significant gas, two ppm or more, I would strongly suggest that you start looking in earnest for what might be a major leak in a case. Always keep in mind leaks are going to be at dispersion. So two parts per million in the front of this case could be a much greater leak as the air mixes and disperses throughout the unit. So any gas at all is an indicator that you have some kind of leak in process. More leaks occur in these meat cases than anywhere else in the stores has been, it has been my experience. And it's a very simple, easy way to check these. Essentially, what I do is, is if I have to, I'll set this down and then just lift the front edge a little bit and let it get a good, a good whiff inside that case. If there's any leak at all, it's going to be a dispersion inside these cases and you'll find it very quickly this way. If you find any leak at all, it's best to go a couple of feet at a time and you can watch the PPM value increase as you get closer to the leak. So any hits, I start looking in, in uh, very close detail a couple of feet at a time and I can detect within two feet of where this leak would be and what hands I have to pull in order to get down inside of it to find whether it's a cracked coil or a braised joint or something like that. Uh, as I move down the cases, uh, I just uh, probe in the front panel here to see if there's any leaks. Keep it in mind, it takes five seconds for the leak to get to the instrument. So when I get a hit, I'm going to go back to where I was five seconds ago. And same thing here. Dunk it in, walk down a few, use a verification process by checking the supply air also. Any refrigerant is going to be mixed in there in dispersion and come out through the supply and you can verify your lower checking, periodically checking that supply in. The drop and scroll method also applies to these case freezers. And uh, what I'll typically do is open every third or fourth door, drop it in the grill in the front. And uh, one of the things you'll notice, a nice feature about the PGM, is it does not go off the hot, it does not go off the cold, it only goes off of a sensitive refrigerant. So I'm going to do the drop and scroll, and we'll see if we have uh, and uh, anything in these cases. So I'll usually start with the first door and then move down to the third floor. That's all the longer it takes. And I just got a hit on refrigerant. You can see how quickly the unit responded. A maximum PPM value of 287, which indicates there's a pretty good size leak in these cases. So you can see when I came out into the ambient air, the detection dropped. So I'm going to walk down a couple more case doors and see if I get any closer to the leak. Okay, that value is a little tiny bit lower. Okay, that's about the same. Okay, 
Okay, I'm up to 390 now, so I'm getting a little bit higher. So the leak is going to be in this area right here. This is where my highest value was as my readings increased from starting on the other end. At this point, I recommend that you shut the fans down, put this unit in defrost. The fans right now are mixing that air and it's dispersing the refrigerant. Even though I can tell I have a higher concentration level here, I can't pinpoint it as long as the fans are running. So once we shut the fans down and put it in defrost, we'll be able to isolate and be able to detect within a couple of feet of where we need to pull the pans to start looking for that crack fitting, brazed joint, or whatever is leaking inside these cases. One of the tips that you want to take notice of is if you look up above me here, this is where the line sets are coming down. And the, the propensity for leaks are multiplied by where all the lines come in and come into the back of these cases. So it's maybe just a coincidence, but this is one area you want to check very closely. Uh, when you start getting leaks picked up in these cases. Uh, testing on coffin cases actually needs to be done in two places. Since these are fed by a pit underneath of the unit, uh, one of the best ways to start is to just kind of troll around the outside of it with your probe. And uh, try not to get it uh, too full of dirt, but uh, just kind of go around the outside of it. And if there's anything leaking from underneath, uh, you'll be able to pick it up pretty quick. The other way to test these cases is pretty much like the drop and scroll method. I'm going to check the front here, and I'm also going to check the supply air in the back. I'm just kind of zigzag my way down this case. See if we have anything pooling in the front or coming out of the supply in the back. Once again, any hit at all is a bad thing because we shouldn't have any gas in there. And this case is nice and tight. Testing in the walk-in freezer is pretty simple. We're just going to walk in and we're going to check both low and high for any leaks. Once I enter the freezer, I'm going to let the probe down near the floor and also reach up into the air circulation. And in the higher places, you may want to get a ladder to get closer to these. But either one of these is going to tell me very quickly if I have gas in this room. It's going to pull low and be stirred up by the fans at the higher levels. in and immediately got a hit. So we have a leak somewhere in there. The same thing pertains as uh, it does to the other cases. You've got to shut the fans off and you're really going to be able to pinpoint it. So let's walk back in again and see what we have going on. Now keep it in mind, this only responds to refrigerant. So it didn't go off false alarm from the cold. It's picked up actual refrigerant in this freezer. The higher concentrations are going to be near the floor again. And you can see the readout, as our beep increases, we have about 12 ppm background in here. And uh, we can also check the airflow from above. But to be able to check this thing correctly, you would need a ladder and be able to get up and probe all around these cases, the expansion valve, and entry tubing, and things like that. The detection level in the freezer was constant all the way up and down, which means it's just been in dispersion. Those fans are stirring it up pretty good in there. So you really do have to shut the fans down and uh, put it in defrost to check with that high pressure uh, uh, refrigerant exactly where those things are going to be. This freezer is clear. I can get a good sense by, once again, by placing the probe near the floor. Same refrigerant be pulling in here. And also I like to get up in the airflow and see if there's anything floating around. Once again, a ladder would be helpful to get closer to these, especially if you do detect the fruit. I, we're in the bakery department doing leak checking. One of the things you want to keep in mind is some of the, uh, the release agents that are used on the baking trays 
have a propellant in it which is very, very similar to 134A. Right now I'm reading just a little tiny bit background and I'm going to spray some in the sink and show you what can happen so that you know that this could actually set off anybody's leak detector because it is a refrigerant based propellant. So I put a little bit of repellent in that sink. I'm going to stick my leak detector down in here, take a good whiff, and then we'll watch our leak detector as it responds. I got actually got four parts per million now it's going back down as soon as I came out of the sink. So you can get a false positive. Well, it's not really a false positive because it is refrigerant. So keep in mind that your leak, uh, your uh, pan release could be giving you a leak signal. I'm going to check the bakery freezer since we're in here and see if we have anything going on in there. I check both high and low, and not to our surprise, we got the same background we got from the uh, pan release because we're storing baking pans in there and they have that same refrigerant in it. So. That's not a false positive. Once again, we have refrigerant, but it's actually come from our baking spray, and it doesn't indicate that that's a leak since we got the same level of refrigerant detection, it's ambient, and in that room. Just to be on the safe side, once a year, you ought to verify that there isn't any leak in there by pulling everything out, cleaning uh, the uh, baking pans out, and checking for leaks in this room.